Now, up until now, we've dealt with charges, source charges, that are points. And when they weren't points, when we had uh, charge smeared along a rod, we broke the rod up into points and we used superposition. Well, today we're going to continue that, but this time we're going to look at a charge that is smeared over a surface uniformly. In other words, if I take this table and I paint it with charged paint, and I paint every little inch of it with charged paint, careful to make it the same thickness all the way across. Now, that thickness we call the surface charge density. We give it the symbol sigma, the Greek S, and the units of that are coulombs per meter squared, or for each meter squared. So if I take a meter stick, and I look at an area that is one meter by one meter, and I add up all the charges in that area, that's how big sigma is. Now, what this represents here is a charge that comes out towards you. Okay, cuts you right in half. Okay, okay, it goes right over the top of the front row here. And it goes back into the room behind. And it goes left and right forever. Okay? And we, we imagine that as just the extension of this table. Now, I claim... I claim, your name, sir? Steve. Steve? I claim, Steve, that that's what the field line looks like, the first field line that I've put on here. Does that seem reasonable to you? No. No. And the reason it doesn't seem reasonable is because we don't uh, see the same answer, but we do see the same problem. I look at the charge and I see a great big surface of charge out in front of me. It just keeps on going. Steve looks and he sees the same thing. A big old surface of charge going out in front of him. But when I look at the answer, the field line, I see up and to the right. What do you see, Steve? Up and to the left. Up and to the left. We can't see different answers if we see the same problem. So that means that the only possible answer that Steve and I can agree on is one that goes straight up, okay? Now these uh, dowels, I bought 23 years ago uh, back when uh, Kmart was still open before they closed last week. Uh, <laughs> and they've seen better days. Uh, some of them are broken and taped back together and they bend a little bit. But just imagine that goes straight up perpendicular to the table. Now, if the second field line is like this, and if I claim that the third field line is like that, Steve's going to have a problem with it again. Because I look and I say, hey, the field lines are getting further apart as I look to the left. And Steve says, no, they look like they're getting further apart as I look to the right. So that means the only answer that Steve and I can agree on, due to symmetry, is if they're evenly spaced. And indeed, if there was someone standing here, they would want to see them evenly spaced as well. And so I will try to make them evenly spaced in all directions. I'm not very gifted spatially, but I'll do my best. Okay, and so imagine this table covered with, uh, with field lines so that no matter which direction you looked at them, they were evenly spaced, okay? And that would be the field. It would look like that. Now, I painted this charge on a table, but the table's just a placeholder. It's just holding the charge. It's charge that creates electric field, and I could have used a 
a big sheet of saran wrap uh, just as easily as a table. And so by symmetry, I should have field lines down there going away. Away from a positive. Away from a positive. Now folks, this field, this parallel field, is an approximation. In real life, we don't have sheets of charge that go on forever. And if we're away from that sheet of charge that's finite, the field lines curve like that. However, there's an entire branch of physics called surface science that happens very close to surfaces. And there are just a huge number of, of applications where we stay away from the edges and we stay close to the surface. And in those cases, we have what's called the infinite sheet or infinite plate approximation. Okay, the infinite sheet or infinite plate approximation. Well, how do I know when I'm, when I'm that close? Well, again, I love the far side. Face it, Greg, you're lost. Um, if you are close enough to the surface, you know, imagine yourself an amoeba right down here. And you look out and you see the, sh the charge is just going on forever, like the Sahara. It's just, whoa. And you look over here, whoa. And you look over there, whoa. Every direction you look, it looks the same. That's close enough. That's close enough. 